And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Do you know what? I've done it again, and I? I played the wrong bloody intro this time. I'm going to have to get that fixed. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome to episode number 44 of the Departure Lounge podcast here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel. Uh, this is the weekly podcast where we sit and talk about aviation, dive into the news, and speak to guests um, about pretty much anything to do with aviation. Uh, my name is Tom Whittle, uh, and I'm the host for this evening. And joining me this evening... He's not here, but he's going to stand in for him. It is, of course, uh, Ian Hartley, who is the regular contributor to the show and stand-in co-host for this evening. Uh, Ian, yes. Good evening to you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Tom. Yourself? Are you all right? Yeah, yeah not too bad. Doing well. Yeah. Doing well, despite the mess up at the beginning. It, like, you know, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it'll be absolutely <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to get that sorted because, yeah, I've got to get that fixed. I'm, I'm pretty sure I uploaded the right one this time, but not, though. Apparently it's not. not to worry at. <laughs> That's the one. Um, so yeah, so you well, you had a, a decent week so far. Yeah, 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 absolutely fine. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's only Wednesday, so anything could happen between now and weekend, but all oh, so far, so good. Yeah. Happy hump day on the descent yeah. to the weekend. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, also joining us, and he came in very late, but we've given him permission to uh introduce himself this way. So uh joining us once again is of course Joe Dooley. By the Lord, Jesus, the noise out of us fucking rain ears be the Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to do it because the topic of conversation this evening is a good one. <laughs> so we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Joe, good evening. How are you? Oh, I tell you, Tom, it's been um, it's been a, a, a week from hell, unfortunately. The, the sad passing of my... Uh, friend uh brendan last saturday and uh everything everything going on you know and stuff like but but look i'm i'm going to do going to do this show in his honor you know he he he, he used to always tune in tune into these shows he he loved them so he did very much and of course as you know guys i i done an honorary visit to the to the airport yesterday and uh gave those rainers hell going out as as, as normal and Sadly, I gave a jet two holidays, uh, uh, 737 800 to send off as well. So, so it, was, uh, it was pretty awesome. And of course, of course, what what a day, what a day to end on a good note. A big, a big cargo 747 challenge accepted, cargo 747 departing. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Did you catch the A34200 that came in as well? I did, uh, Tom. I, I got her landing and all that. So, Great so stuff. She, she's on. She's on my ordinary camera, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get cracking and get them up to loaded to YouTube. I have to get these up. She, she's due to go out now. I'd say within eleven days after the painting, because it's, it's a Bahrainian government uh, A340 200. Mm, and a rare one as well, because the 340 200s are super rare right now. So, oh, they are, yeah, they are, yeah, definitely yeah. one to catch. Absolutely. Oh, um, I'm delighted. Despite the little mess up this, at the beginning with the the intro, I've, I've got to find the right one. I'm, I'm I'm certain it's around somewhere. Um, we'll put that little dedication out there anyway for your friend, Jer. Um, you know, just to just to let you know that we're obviously thinking of you at this time. Ah, oh, thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Wonderful stuff. So before we get into this evening's show and get into the comments, of course, we will go into a little bit of housekeeping. I haven't done this section yet, but we'll do it. Uh, we'll include it. So we're in on social medias, um, Instagram, Discord, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and now we're on Twitch, which I forgot to add down oh, below. Awesome. But we're on Twitch now. We are going to be starting our little uh, streaming of uh, Xbox PC games and everything else like that. 
um, I will chuck the link into the chat. So if anyone wants to give us a follow, um, then obviously you can do that and that'd be much appreciated. But you can keep up to date with everything to do with the podcast by checking out the links in the description below to our social medias. Uh, also, uh, we do have a shop last week. We announced that Jer would get his special shirt that he has um, on the market as well. Um, so you can buy your own Jerlingus t-shirt off of our shop, which is in the uh, description below, as well as obviously new designs that we brought out last week. If you didn't see that, go back after the show and check them out. And if you fancy it, do consider buying one. Uh, also, as well, if you wish to become a guest on the show, uh, do drop us a message on any of our social medias um, and we'll get you on the show as well as soon as you like um everything apart from that i think that's pretty much it ian you get the honors today uh as steve is is not here um if you'd like to just point upwards oh yes, sir yeah straight away literally right there yeah, yeah there we go definitely definitely a podcast just checking <laughs> just making sure that's all anyway um so are you people, sure about that i'm fairly certain i was the one that you made it right <laughs> 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 I was the one that made it. I'm fairly certain it's a podcast. Anyway. Oh, anyway. <laughs> that's enough of that. So um, let's jump into some comments before everybody has their opinions with uh, this evening's topic of conversation. In the chat right now, I have just put the link to the Twitch channel. Uh, Ian, if you'd like to go through some of the comments. Yeah. Uh, so straight away there, we've got Mark Jones, one of your friends, I think, uh, the Jer. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, Jer Lingus, it's the Ryan Hurt fucking beast band. <laughs> so I'll leave, I'll leave that exactly where it is. Uh, Absolutely. Mary Kelly saying, hi, Jer. Oh, Marco man. Barrett, evening, guys. Steve Plains, evening, Tommy Ian and Jer. I finally got off the trains back down south. No, yeah, gone. so we'll, we'll quickly just point that out. We'll quickly be Ian, uh, Ian. Steve's been up at Edinburgh, um, for sort of the last sort of few days, I think. But mm. he got up no, yesterday, was it? Or the day before? Oh, he went, he went up on Monday, didn't he? Monday went up on Monday, mm. um, got completely pissed and didn't catch a plane back. So he's been on the train ever since, and yeah, he's not here, but he'll, hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll be here at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and drive safe and don't. Doing yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, Jack Rolls, by the Lord Jesus, he's back. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> Good man, Jack. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Plain Spotted Triple Five. Hello, guys. Hello. Evening. Uh, Evening triple Isaac. seven. Uh, yep. Jack Rolls again. Hello to all. Uh, Mark Jones. Yeah, Ryan Ur refunded my flight after 18 months, Jerlingers. What do you make 80, of that, Jer? 18, uh, 18 months of talk, yeah. I remember Mark actually saying saying something about because they uh both both him and James uh Ian were meant to be coming over uh uh to visit me here uh in Ireland and do some playing spot with me at Dublin, but uh due to everything that happened, uh, uh it didn't materialize, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know they, they were dragging their feet a little bit, weren't they? Once upon a time. Oh, once upon a time, mm, no, you said yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Mark Jones again. This is the best podcast in the world. Ah, uh, thanks, Mark. Yeah, sounds like a tenacious D song, that doesn't it? Where's <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the oh, yeah, there. Oh, hang on, I've lost it again now. This is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Rolls, I second that, Mark. These guys are the best. Hi, Jack. <laughs> I won't say that if I'm no, I won't say that if I make you on a plane, lol. <laughs> uh i'm watching this awesome podcast on my tv it's amazing no see no as you read out the comment that jack rogues put about like i second that mark these guys are the best immediately pokemon came to my head so i just burst out into pokemon song all right and anybody that knows but yeah ian won't know pokemon whatever uh, <laughs> I, I used to play that pokemon live thing on, on the mobile phone with my daughter a lot younger, oh little pokemon yeah. go yeah yeah pokemon go that's it yeah well, wow. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, yeah. Mark, yeah. Mark Jones again. Anyway, so I'm watching this awesome podcast on my TV. It's amazing. Oh, you never really? specify what's amazing, Mark. Your TV or the podcast. Yeah, no, Mark. <laughs> you should be more specific. 
Yeah. Uh, and Mark, what 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 size TV are you actually uh yeah. watching? What's the width of your screen? Yeah, yeah. If it is it is. HD or four D uh four D, four K rather. If it's both, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I suggest getting a smaller TV. If you yeah. want to Close your end. eyes, shut your eyes and just listen yeah. to the voices. Yeah. <laughs> um the departure lounge, yeah. There's so there's a link there for the um Twitch for the uh, gaming, which will be a lot of fun when we start doing that, I'm sure. Look forward to that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob Brown playing spotting. Hiya, Rob. Um, evening troops. Hope all is well. Evening, Rob. Oh, yeah. One of yeah, our regular, regular uh, viewers. Yes, a big thumbs yeah. up. Oh. T and Artley's put, uh, I don't know where the grey blue's gone. Um, <laughs> hey, girls, good show tonight. Fantastic with yeah. what well, looks like grey at the end. Yeah, must be a new viewer. <laughs> must be, yeah. Mm. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Steve Plains, the expensive drink that turned out to be. I'll <laughs> bleep the obscenities. Thanks, Steve. Obscenities, lovely. Yeah. Uh, I'm not spotting. Can't be Edinburgh to get full of it. Cracking city for a night. Oot. He went to that watch um, Hearts football um, team as well. Um, Hearts of Midlothian. Night, yeah, and I think that, that's what triggered it. Mm. Oh. Um, I'm Mike saying it's a HD 48 inch TV. Fantastic. Oh, awesome. Nice. In that case, I am massively sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, it's big enough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a quick one, Joe, that uh, obviously Ian missed a comment there. Um, oh. But a quick one, obviously, before we can get into the show. Um, Mark Jones, how many uh, Ryanairs did you spot at Dublin? Oh, uh, believe me, I think I reckon I got uh, about five or six uh, going out. And then there was a good few of them coming in, of course, returning from flights that they're actually on but uh but uh i have to say now it was great a great feeling being back uh back at the airport yesterday my first first outing on the field again mm. and uh you know it it, it was a, it was a, an honorary visit like uh for my late friend uh brendan you know like it's nice 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 for him because it's what he'd want me to be actually doing is uh getting back out doing doing the things that i that i love the trains the planes again so so as soon as I get word that A340, 200 will be going out, I'll be, I'll be back up there to get that going out. Another four engines. You know something, Tom? In the, in the great door, I went up there yesterday, right? And I got, got two four-engine aircraft for my first visit of 2022. Very after, good. Mm, after two years. Yeah, that's, that's an achievement these days, isn't it? It is, uh, and you know something. Mean? It's a blessing. It's a blessing when you, when you, when you get uh, uh, something like that on, on on your first out, and then as well, you know. Definitely, especially an A three forty two hundred, like Tom said, they're, uh, they're definitely rare. a rare bird, aren't they? These they're days, a rare so bird, absolutely. really well. Yeah. And, and you see, and, and you see, as I was saying to Tom at the start, there, it's a it's a Bahrainian government uh, mm. uh, uh, aircraft as well, like you know. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Lovely, really well. lovely, lovely plane. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, you see yeah. quite a lot of them with um, Egypt Air going into Heathrow and stuff before they. Oh, I remember them. The... Um, I remember them. I remember them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Mm. Yes, sounds like you had a great time. So looking forward to seeing the uh, the footage, the footage. Once, you, uh, once you get yes. it. On. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get it on YouTube, Jay. Yeah, still on YouTube. Uh, hey, listen, <laughs> guys. Listen, guys. I certainly will. But I, uh, I uh, did. Did you did you get the pop in on my on my on my live stream store I did from Dublin? I know you did, Tom. What no, I've not had a chance yet. Is there anything on Facebook where I can watch it? Uh, they're, they're on they're on they're on they're on my Facebook page, Ian. Oh, okay, right, yeah, and, yeah. And you and you'll see me you'll see me with a grey with a grey hat on my head for <laughs> uh, as I say. <laughs> That's the highlight of the show. That's I'm sure I'll we'll hear you before I see you, Joe. <laughs> Oh, you will. Believe me, you will. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. So we are obviously here, as the title just, uh, you know, says, we are here to discuss uh, the um, wonderful airline of Ryanair, who have built up quite a reputation over the last few years um, through many different, different ways, from people, you know, complaining about hard landings to their absolutely top-notch like Twitter account, which I'm going to show later on because the, the Twitter account had me howling today just purely because of what was said. Oh, <laughs> it, honestly, God, it was so so funny. But they Positive are known for their, their wonderful I, humor. I look forward to seeing that now. <laughs> Absolutely, crack, yeah, it, honestly, God, it's cracking. I've got it up on the screen, but I'm gonna I'll, I'll show it later. But right. yeah, so, so we are here to discuss uh, Ryanair from going from the like a very small airline to Europe's largest. Uh, carrier, yeah, low, low yeah. Cost carrier. Now, Joe, obviously, being uh, the resident Irishman, 
Um, you would have obviously been um, around to sort of see the uh, formation of Ryanair. Do you want to give us sort of a brief description before we get into the main details as to how they yeah, were formed? Yeah, yeah, Tom, I certainly would because, like, um, I remember, like, no, um, I started I started going, going to the airport uh, uh, in Dublin uh, as a 10-year-old, a 10-year-old kid. So I would uh, I would remember quite a lot of activity that that, that <laughs> happened uh, in, in the start and the build-up uh, of uh, Ryanair. I remember... I remember them having having the uh, uh, the first uh, uh, turboprop uh, aircraft known known as a a Bantaranti, a Bantaranti, which which I think was a, a double propeller uh, aircraft. It could be could be. I think they might have had four engine variants of them as well, boys. But I I remember seeing a lot of two engine ones along them. Now don't get me wrong, they were nice little aircraft. The uh, the it was a great um, a great. Uh, start uh, to them, and then of course, uh, as as the time went on, then uh, well, Aer Lingus I remember had um, a BAC 111s, but I think they had the BAC 111. There you are, yes, that's that's the beauty. That's, that's the that's, Embraer that's, 110. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you, some people used to call them Bantarantes, but yeah, the proper word would be the Embraer. But that is a nice, uh, that is a nice little aircraft. But I don't know. I don't know if I would have loved no uh, traveling in that thing. Now I don't know what it would have been would have been like or anything like that. You know. Uh, so like the, the Bandarante, as they call, is is you know it's a small commuter plane sort of thing. Yeah, and yeah. Serves well for a lot of airlines and stuff. Obviously, it's the sort of the the older brother of the what became the more popular one twenty, which yeah. had the tail at the top. Um, but obviously, you know, Ryanair starting out with I think it's like flights to Waterford. I think it was that's um, right that's right tom yeah yeah waterford um uh who was it too oh uh oh you know what i had it then oh sorry gatwick gatwick yeah yeah gatwick was the one i was, I was trying to think the same like because i remember i remember them uh 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 starting gatwick i think as their first route i think as far as i know and then then they then they upped the game a bit more than as uh as they, they settled in, like, uh, like Gatwick, Gatwick was a real main test, I think, for mm. them to see, see how well well it was going to go with passenger numbers and everything like that. But sure, as time went on, they started to, to build even more. As, uh, and then, then eventually they introduced, I think, uh, the first BAC 111, I think, as far as, as far as I can remember. And the first time, now I witnessed them i wasn't there uh, i wasn't cursing at the noise of them or anything i i i was kind of get i was kind of used to the noise of them but then then as time time went as bac 111s became a bit more bigger for Ryanair. uh i was listening to those rolls royce t engines uh every, every time and uh and i said that's it this is where this is where where i i start uh getting into the into the action and then i started as time went on then i started just Cursing and swearing at the knees of the planes, then as mm. as, uh, as they were going out, like because they because believe it or not, guys, and there's no word of a lie, the noise of the BAC 111 was so ear piercing that, that I ended up coming back from Dublin with headaches and uh, <laughs> and 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 earaches after the noise of them. So noisy for such an underrated, uh, under sorry, underpowered plane. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, and very and believe it or not, Tom. Very, very smoky on the power to uh, that that you see the two black trails coming out the back of them as as they be going out. And I know it's a BAC one eleven when it'd take off. It'd actually take off kind of on a level on a level rotation. And especially you now at Gatwick, uh, uh, I I think I managed to witness a BAC one eleven belong to them, and it came right over the the back gate down at the back of the runway. To the other end of the runway and i got the head blown off me nearly uh by the noise of it. and it and a european one came out then shortly after mm. i remembered well so not many people actually know that the bandarante or the embryo 110 um, yeah were the first planes that they they actually owned because they were a small um a small commuter weren't they yeah they're only a small uh, yeah they're only starting out small like uh tom but uh but i tell you how times how times have changed now as uh everything uh went went along and then of course sadly then as time went on uh 
they started to face the BAC 111s out slowly. Now, don't get me wrong, I was sad to see them going because I did, even no matter how I cursed and swear to the noise of the, B, at the 111, I did love them uh, in my own way. And then, then the first of the 737-200 advanced uh, models started coming in then. You know, it's amazing how, how as the months and the years uh, went, they grew, they kept growing and growing and growing. And then, of course, the roots started getting more longer as well. Like they started uh, doing Edinburgh, they started doing uh, uh, Glasgow, uh, they started doing Luton and uh, uh, whatever other airports, East Midlands and everything uh, uh, around the UK. Like, and then, then, of course, as time went on, then the European routes then started coming into the equation. Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And yeah. They obviously, like you said, the they went from having the the the, the Embraer one tens to the B yeah. one elevens, which was a massive sort of upgrade for them. Oh as well. yeah, but also yeah. other aircraft that Ryanair had that a lot of people don't seem to know, such as the ATR forty twos as well. Um, they were around That's for a right. Short time. That's yeah, they right were around then. for a short yeah. time, yeah. about two years, about two years or so. So you wouldn't have you, know, you wouldn't have remembered them for you. Know, for for a while, and they were only around for a cup of coffee. If, if that, that. that's all, it was a short, uh, a short-lived uh, scenario. Mm. And then from obviously like the the, the BAC one elevens were retired in nineteen ninety four, and of course replaced by the goddamn noisy the yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the seven three seven two hundreds, which were then becoming a massive mainstay in oh, yeah. the Ryanair fleet, weren't they? Yeah, big time. And the thing is, the one thing I loved about the 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 seven three seven two hundreds, they 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 used to they used to crackle uh, going over, it's like snap, crackle and pop uh, uh, when the when the engines are power up. Uh, like they were Pratt, they were Pratt and Whitney Pratt and Whitney uh, engines uh, on the seven three seven two hundreds. JD JD nineties, I think they were. The, yeah, uh, JT nine Ds, I think, weren't they? Same yeah, 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 yeah. JT nines yeah, and stuff. So yeah, yeah, definitely worth. Yeah, they were about twenty, I think it was. Was it like twenty odd planes? Uh, about twenty two, I think they had. Twenty two odd planes. Yeah, so that's a good Something like that. Yeah, yeah, and um, obviously by that time, the the seven three seven two hundreds basically built Ryanair to become um, what they you know what they sort of are sort of on their what, what, sorry what they were on their way to yeah it was obviously becoming the, the largest european carrier um and of course once the excuse me once the um new generation of 737s were, were sort of announced and stuff ryanair just went yeah we'll take about 250 of them the one thing though tom i will say though i remember them when they started introducing then the the special liveries like you had uh you had the Aircell, Aircell, the Vodafone uh, Ryanair. You had the News of the World. You had the Kilkenny Ryanair, which Mark Jones mentioned uh, a few a few minutes ago. He he remembers seeing the Kilkenny livery uh, at Gatwick, I presume. And uh, then there was the Tipperary Crystal one, was another. Then you had the Jaguar. You had the Hertz, the Hertz rental car, rental car, car one as well. There was there was quite there was quite a good few, and of course. Not forgetting Tom, they had an ex Lufthansa, ex Lufthansa seven three seven two hundred. They did, yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember, I remember all those liveries so well, and that's what I was saying. Like, uh, it would be great to see those liveries on on the updated versions. Mm. It would actually, yeah. I think it would be quite nice to see sort of um, those kind of style of liveries. Maybe not the same ones, but like those style of liveries on sort of like the maxes or even the the current sort of generation or say the new new generation of 737s, um, yeah, of 737s. Yeah, yeah. so obviously ryanair took the huge plunge didn't they of, of ordering a crap ton of 737-800s oh uh, yeah yeah main, main sort of backbone of their um their sort of fleet going forward um and the you know the amount of hubs and everything else that they have which we'll dive into at some point is phenomenal but what we're going to do is take a quick pause because ian's got his fantastic stats again oh well yeah they're not um as um well drawn out as what they were last week but you, you, you're mentioning about um the hubs and things like that there so ryan Ur, the group all together they've actually got 470 planes at the moment so wow um 
let me have a look. So Ryanair actually fly 258 planes. They've got 258 of their own planes at the moment. And 249 of them are 737-800s. The rest of them are either maxis, and they've got one 737-700. They do indeed. Oh, what they, they use for... That, um, I caught that right? son of a... <laughs> <laughs> Which is used for corporate and training and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. occasional passenger flight as well, if it's needed. Yeah, That's right, yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah. I see, Tom, but, believe I mean, it or not. Believe it or not, guys. I, yeah, uh, they've they've I got that, that many 737s. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's crazy. And it yeah. they're so loyal to, to Boeing pretty much throughout. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Despite oh, yeah. the fact that like, um, we, were mentioning, um, we were mentioning before, weren't we, Ian, before we went online, um, that obviously the division of Lauda, which is to do with Ryanair, have got these absolutely. A320s mm. as well. That's yeah, so, yeah, so they've, they've also got a few subsidiaries as well, Ryanair. So uh, I'll just go back to the um, actual fleet, what they're flying at the moment. So they've actually ordered another 210 max maxis. Now, I was reading their annual report today, and it was 280 odd pages long. And I got bored at page 168 and just binged it off after that. <laughs> <I'll be honest. laughs> the it, fact uh, we even got to that was crazy. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, just, I just wanted some facts and figures out of them. So, yeah, I mean, we, we all look at Wikipedia and God knows where, but if you're reading it from the horse's mouth, I suppose it's all right then. So they were saying, and now it didn't actually say what the discount was when they ordered these um, 210 maxis from Boeing. But apparently they have got an absolutely phenomenal deal to, mm. for these planes. And wow. um, so these 210 maxis are on order. Um, they also wore Malta Air, Louder Air. Uh, so Malta Air have got 132 737s, um, 120 or 737-800s, and the other 12 are 737 maxis. Mm. And then, of course, they've got Louder Air, what Tom was just mentioning them. Now, they've only got... 29 A320s, but these are all on wet lease, and the lease runs they start running out. Um, I think say November, I think 2022. And as that as the leases are up, they're going to re be replaced by 737 maxes as well. So it's it's just going to be an entire 737 fleet. Max, so oh. yeah, so yeah. Uh, wow. they've also got I had it written down somewhere. Yeah, there it is. They've also got a, a little subsidiary called Ryanair UK. Mm -hmm. Which runs out of Stansted now. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, out of this subsidiary, what runs out of Stansted, they've got four seven three seven eight hundreds. Now, they set up this subsidiary just in case it would have had a. It, it was all to do with when we, when we left Brexit, and, and if we were going to have a hard Brexit, they were concerned about what sort of impact it would have on the airline industry and things like that. So they set up this little subsidiary at um, at Stansted. Whether it's been needed or what, I don't know. And what 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 its actual use is now, I, I don't really think it has got much of a use, to be quite honest. But you know, it gives you an idea of um, just what what um, yeah, just just what they're up to and, and what you know what you know the, the the airline is absolutely huge. It's absolutely phenomenal. And and Tom was saying about the hubs as well. I think the I think they've got eighty two hubs or something like that. Over it's a huge amount. Europe. Yeah, it's that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, 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 no, that is crazy, guys. Wow. Yeah, I think they've got about eighty two hubs, and I, thought, I had it written down somewhere. Where they, I think they fly to, is it three hundred and something or two hundred and something? Uh, did a little, little, little. Well, I've not got it written down. Well, I know, um, I I know Ian uh, uh, and Tom. Yeah, two hundred and ten. Uh, two hundred ten. I know Spain. Spain is a lot of route. There's a lot of routes to Spain now. I know that. Like you've Tenerife, you've you've probably Malaga, you've Barcelona. I think as far mm. as I know as well. So like, yeah. they do go. They do go to a lot of the uh, Spain resorts now and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, mm. yeah. But uh, it, it wasn't just that I was reading as well, I and mean, it's not just like. Um, I mean, ninety nine percent of people just rock up at the airport, jump on a Ryanair plane, fly to wherever where they're going for next to nothing. Get that's off at the yeah. other side and then yeah. bitch about it on Twitter, yeah. don't they? And that's what that's what people do. But at the end of the day, I mean, they've got how, how many years they've been going? Thirty-eight years or something? I reckon they are at that. Uh, well, no, since eighty-four, isn't it? How yeah. many accidents have they had? Eighty-four. They've never had an accident. They've never no. had it. They, they, apart from probably injuries through 
heavy landing to support and things like that. They've, they've never had a, a, a serious injury. They've never had a death. They've never had anything. And, and as far as her lines go, they've got one of the, if not the best, safety record of, of any budget airline, I suppose. Oh, they have. I, listen, I know, yeah. I know, I know, Ian, I know, I know, Ian, I, I, all I do really is I, I just curse and swear at the nights of the plane. That's all <laughs> I do. That's, 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 that's my, that's my uh, intro, you see, as I say, like, you know, yeah. that's what makes, that's what makes my day at the airport uh, interesting and exciting, you know, so, you know, like, no matter what, no matter what, I might curse and swear at them, but, uh, but as I say, I'll still fly on them, like, because they are, they are, they are a good airline. Now, Absolutely. I've, been, I've been on a couple of flights now, and I have to say, I've been treated like royalty on, on some of the flights. Like, mm, I flew they know who you are. <laughs> well, yeah. I suppose they probably do, Tom, yeah. You know, but... Oh, Tom, but what... <laughs> again. <laughs> well, I'm I knew this thing, time. Like I say with Ryanair, I mean, pe people, if people, a lot of people get on a Ryanair and expect to be treated like royalty, like Jer's just saying there, well, if you want to be treated like royalty, you've got to pay like royalty. And if you want That's a premium it. product... You get you buy a premium product. If you want something cheap and cheerful to get you from A to B, jump on a Ryan plane. Yeah. Ryan plane. It it does best, what it yeah. has to do. It gets you from one place to another. Cheap. Best way to describe it, right? Best way to describe it, and I'm gonna go use a bit of car tech like terminology here. Yeah, not, okay. Not no. the best, but we're gonna go yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah. So imagine you're faced with two different things, right? So you've got your 2021 uh Land Rover or Range Rover Discovery. And, and things like that. It's got everything you want in it, right? Those mm -hmm. are your, like your British Airways, your American Airlines, your, I don't know, whoever else you want to use, right? Or do you settle for what you just, the bare minimum, which is like a, a Dacia Sandero or, you know, a, a Duster or something like that. Dacia, I'll probably get grilled for that. Yeah. I don't care how it's said. It's Dacia, right? Mm -hmm. To me, I don't care. But like, you go know, Range Rover <coughs> with everything you want in it, but you've got to pay over mm -hmm. the top for it. Or do you just go? I just want to get there in one piece, A to B. Absolutely, the, the Dacia, uh, yeah. Duster, or or Sandero, or something yeah. like that. The bare, yeah. literally the bare minimums. So, yeah, it's it's one of those things where you you get what you pay for with Ryanair, which is absolutely. Not a lot. Oh yeah, not yeah. a lot, but it will get you there from from A to B. Well, that was so it. That's it. I mean, if you want a kind of Heinz beans, don't go to Aldi for them. That's the way I sum it up. <laughs> I'll go car terminology. You use the food. Yeah, you may as well throw one in there as well. I, I use by the Lord Jesus to raise all that fucking plan be the Jesus. Sorry about the swearing. <laughs> Sorry about the swearing, but that's that's just that's my terminology. <laughs> we'll go you for know. it. Why not? We'll go for it. But yeah, so not only have they got the subsidiary of the Ryanair yeah. UK, but they've also got Ryanair Sun. Yeah. As well, which is obviously the Polish division. Which helps them run their base out of Warsaw, I think it is. is yeah. It? Well, there's a couple of destinations in Poland that they fly out of, so it also helps them with that. And the same with the UK register as well. Think of um, what we were talking about uh, with with Jack Rolls uh, off air last week. Oh yeah, with yeah. European cargo. European cargo have had to re-register two or three of their A340s because then it allows them to have a UK. Like a, uh, I mean, he'll he'll probably tell us, but it's something like a certification or or like a, a it's something to do with just being on the UK register sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's probably one of the reasons why they had the U Rhino UK in Stansted, isn't it? For that reason. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, do you know something, guys? Do you know something? All all their maxes are actually based at Stansted, but uh, no, no. Unfortunately, I had to leave the airport at the time I did yesterday. There was actually a delivery of a of a Ryanair seven three seven Max uh, due into Dublin yes yesterday evening, but I sadly I wasn't there to see the uh, see it arriving. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what time it was uh, arriving in from uh, from uh, uh, the Boeing field uh, mm. uh, in Seattle now last night. Unfortunately, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, what's the other, like also some of the um, some of the aircraft for. Um, Ryanair are also registered with the Maltese registration as well. So, Ooh. so there's Maltese registrations as well. So there's that's right. a whole that's load right. of like you know it's like a nice variety. So while you sit there and go, there's a Ryanair, there's a Ryanair, there's a Ryanair, there's a Ryanair. Like especially at Stansted and that, you never quite know which one you're going to get because there's so many different like 
Definitely. variations of the registration yeah, report. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, you know, especially on top of like Malta Air now, Buzz, Buzz. and, and Louder. 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 Ryanair. Ryanair, yeah. Fund, which I think are now Buzz as well. But Buzz, also, yeah. Buzz yeah. is an interesting thing because this is set, it's the second attempt at launching Buzz because they tried to do that way back. Um, and obviously, uh, I'm sure it was Ryanair that did it. I think it was actually Tom. Was it Ryanair that done the, the first initiation of Buzz? I have no idea. I, I think I, I, well, if anyone in the chat actually knows, knows, uh, uh I'm actually going to find out now because I yeah, don't, yeah, to... yeah, do yeah, I'm on it now. You're all right. I'm looking at it. Unless, though, unless, uh, uh, unless someone else maybe tried, I don't know, but uh, let's have a quick look. All right, uh, Ian, you might, you might, uh, you guys may actually come up, uh, uh, it was better. KLM and then Ryan, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, ah. it was, so Buzz was styled as Buzz. It was a British low-cost airline operating services within Europe. It operated from 2000 until 2004 as a subsidiary of KLM and then Ryanair. Uh, fair enough. It's, it's yeah. close enough. I mean, Ryanair yeah. are part of it, so yeah. I'll take it. it it's yeah. close enough. My knowledge is there somewhere. So, yes. Awesome. So, so yes, yeah, so it's a sort of the second initiation of, of Buzz and Malta Air and things like that. So... There's there's lots of different things that Ryanair are doing just to probably accommodate for the fact that there are a lot of planes in their fleet right now and they need to do something with them. Maybe and they're only going to get more and more as as time goes on. Oh, I reckon yeah. so, Tom. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So yeah, so we'll just quickly run through um, a couple of things. So not many people, not like, well, in the media and things like that, especially on like social media and things like that. Michael O'Leary gets a lot of stick, should we say, um, yeah. for for certain things. But many people don't know that he doesn't actually own the airline. And how much does he own, Ian? Three point nine percent. Three point nine percent of the uh, of the airline. Yeah, itself. he's just he's just the CEO, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's literally oh. just the CEO, but he just gets crapped on. <laughs> Yeah. He gets oh, crap from right. everything that he, he says, but he only owns like a very tiny portion of the airline, which wow. is, is crazy. I didn't know that until we said it to me no, when no. we went on, on, on the show. So yeah, it's a I frightening amount in terms of how yeah. much he actually owns. But the I amount think, of crap he gets is about absolutely. 97%. Yeah. I know the HSBC have a massive chunk of it. They own a massive chunk. But I, I didn't really get into who owns what and who owns and how much to get paid and things yeah. like that. Yeah. I wasn't really yeah. interested in that, to be quite honest. I was yeah. more. I was interested in. Um, it, it was. I mean, you, you think of these Ryanair, like you say, Jern, the 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 dirty and they just absolutely tear off that runway and they they come in with a thump and things like that. But oh, it's a, you, you, yeah. would, you would not believe that they're um, the most environmentally friendly aircraft. I was going to say aircraft carrier. They are the most environmentally friendly carrier in Europe. And they've got a better CO two footprint than any other, any other airline. At uh, oh, I don't really believe that. You know, yeah, no, no. Listen, no, you can tell he's done his research. You can tell he's done his research tonight. He, he yeah. has, Tom. I tell you, he has. I'm fair. I'm fair play. I have to say that because he's well, a stat man. Be, ba, 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 I find it interesting. I mean, we all know ba, about. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, we all we all look at the plane and we all know about them. We know a little bit about the history of them. But when it comes to People give them such a bad press, and and they don't deserve it. For, mm. for the, the, I mean, they, they must have about fifteen charities what they help out and things like that. What they're plowing money into, and That's awesome, like you yeah. say, they've got um, sixty six grams of carbon dioxide per passenger, which is fifty percent lower than the, other, the the top five carriers in Europe, which is a, a really really good statistic and a really good selling <laughs> point for the company. Although the feeling the feeling it a little bit now because. Pre-pandemic, they were flying at ninety-five percent capacity on the flights, and that's gone down now to an average of only seventy-one percent. So it's less less planes flying, and they're not being as they're not getting as full either. Mm. Although, even with the cost of fuel, they sort of hedged the bets on. Well, they they they, they sort of buy the fuel two or three years in advance, so they're Ooh. buying the, the fuel at a, at a set price now, a decent low price. And obviously, the fuel prices are going up as they are. 
I mean, it's still only about 60p a litre for the Jet 1 fuel, right? But um, that's another stat for another day. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. But, yeah, but oh, it, it goes to show that, you know, they've, they've got the, the, the forward thinking that they're actually thinking about. They're thinking about... Um, I think they're calling the game chain changes, aren't they? This new, um, the new seven three seven eight hundred, not the maxis, but yeah. Um, and they're they're going to have a lower emission engines, and they're going to squeeze four more people on, and things like that. So, you know, they're thinking that far in front and what have you. And and as much as they're still building the business, they're also trying to make it as environmentally friendly and as green as possible. Yeah, and exactly. And, and and it's very ethical what they're trying to do, despite the bad press what they get. Yeah, and I, yeah, sometimes here's, I don't think it's fair. Here's, with the, a, here's a good thing now, guys. I'm going to tell you now. When I was at Dublin now yesterday, right, and it's no word of a lie, every every Ryanair 737 800 I seen either coming in or going out yesterday, they was they were absolutely spanking clean. There wasn't there wasn't a scratch or a mark on none of them. You know mm. something? They, they the one thing you see about Ryanair, the one good thing I like about them. They come with their own with their own steps like uh, that comes down down from the plane, right? There's no there's no air bridge or anything uh, uh, going near near the door of the plane or anything. And because you you look at other airlines and you see them like you, you always see where um, where the air bridge is actually put out put out to the to the side of the plane for passengers aboard. Right there, don't have to do that whatsoever. You you have to have their own steps and and straight up. Straight up, you go into the aircraft. You know, the steps are built into the plane. They're built into the plane, Tom. Yeah. Exactly, and that's why you never the... ever see no. a Ryanair plane at a gate because no. they've got their own steps no. built into and the plane. No matter what airport I, I it, let it be Frankfurt, mm -hmm. let it be Gatwick, or no, I've never been to Luton or uh, or. Uh, um, I can vouch like... for. I can vouch for like. I think you you'll see one or two Ryanair planes on a stand. But majority of them don't need to be on a stand. They don't they need to be on a stand at all. The and they're you the know. only airline that has it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's, that's another cost-cutting exercise, isn't it, for them? Hmm. It's to keep the cost down, doesn't it, if they're not going on stand? Well, yeah. that's it, yeah, exactly, guys. Mm. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll just we'll quickly take a breather, because there is still so much to talk about for right now, especially Michael O'Leary as well. Um, yes. And he gets a lot of crap. Um but we'll just we'll jump in from here. So uh, Rob Brown plane point said 737 700, I think, is based somewhere like Doncaster or Leeds, mainly for crew training. Mm. I can vouch for that. It's yeah. East Midlands, I think. Oh, is the, yeah, nice one. And then I just happened to luckily catch it at Stansted when I went. I think it was just doing like a, a maintenance, I think, a maintenance trip um, to, to Stansted, oh. I think, possibly. But it is East Midlands that it's based at, basically. Um Jack Roll says that the Dreamliner Ryan airplane is just gorgeous to catch, but it's still a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely is. You and I have caught that, haven't we, Ian, uh, when we did the Manchester trip? Yeah, for some reason. I've no pictures of it, though. It was absolutely panning it down, weren't it? When panning we it down, yeah. I've got a picture somewhere. I'm sure I've got a picture somewhere. Yeah, I have I'm uploaded really it, that. but I think it's on Twitter, uh, Instagram, I think. I will, I'll see if I can bring that up at some yeah. point. Nice one. Nice one. The comment I showed earlier was Marco Barrett saying that O'Leary wanted originally the A320s. What a completely different world that would have been. Um, however, he that wanted a been... knock, knock down price and Airbus told him to shove it. Yeah. Wow. So that's probably why his loyalty to Boeing is 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 there. Um, okay, Steve yeah. Plains is off. That's why I could smell something. He said, great show up until this point. Catch you all next week. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, it's gone downhill since. Yeah. It's, that must be that hangover yeah. in the train. Um oh, Rob Brown Plains Point again says, I think there was a stink a few years back when two Ryanairs diverted to Barcelona on fuel emergencies from Madrid. Pilots reportedly said they were encouraged to run tight fuel margins. Oh. Mm. Which is interesting. Uh, Mark Jones says, Ryanair did have a landing incident once years ago, hit birds and then forced landing, broke the plane, but all survived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that could have happened to anyone, couldn't it? It's not through bad well, news or anything like it. that, is it? So, yeah. It could have happened to anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jack Roll says, Ian, Tom, Joe, and Steve, you guys are the best friends for life and always. Oh, nice. nice one, Jack. I'll Thanks, take that. Jack. Thank you very much. Up, Jack. Yeah. Uh, Mark Jones then says, I agree, the best podcast ever. This is not <clears throat> uh, ever with these three. Obviously, Steve's not here. That's why it's the best. 
<laughs> I'm just getting reminded of Tenacious D's tribute song. You know, it just makes me want to burst into that. Like, you know, <laughs> this is not the greatest podcast in the world. It's just a tribute. Um, and then Marco, Marco Barrett says, question is, do you want to buy a scratch card? Oh, yeah. Hey, Tom, you know something? I, 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 I've flown on so many, uh, uh, so many Ryanair flights uh, over the last uh, couple of years, like before any anything bad really came in the last two years. But I will say one thing: the one thing I always notice every time, every time I get on a Ryanair, where 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 do you think I'm always put? I'm always put, put sitting over the wing for some some apparent reason. Even even on my Delta Airlines flight to Atlanta, uh, Atlanta back in two thousand eight. I was put sitting sitting on the wing of the seven six seven three hundred. I mm. I'll never forget that. But but yeah, any time any time they come around the cabin, uh, they'll always ask, "Do you want to, do you want to buy a scratch card?" And you know something, I always I always buy the scratch cards because God, and you know something, guys, I've actually I've actually uh, uh, won on the scratch cards a couple of times. Like uh, you you click now. I never sent the bloody cards off door to be put into the into the competition. Silly Billy me, because you never know that. That, <laughs> that, that, that. that could be the time I could win something. But you scratch, scratch, scratch three cushions off for a soft landing. <laughs> uh, no, no, that that that's something I could probably fucking do it do it do it down the line, you know. Could, yeah. could you imagine scratching off like you know, get the line of like, woohoo, you won a soft landing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, hey, uh, Tom, you know something? You bang your head off the, off the, off the rack where the luggage is. I, you know something? That actually nearly happened to me. I, I, I was sitting in my seat. I think it was coming back from Frankfurt uh, on my lap. Uh, 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 that, that was the time now I went over to Frankfurt when things were kind of picking up with the, with the, with the, everything that's gone on. And I went over to see the MD11s uh, belong to Lufthansa Cargo before they, they retired. But coming back from Frankfurt, I forgot that I hadn't got my seatbelt on. The next thing, next thing we hit the ground. Well, I went flying. I was flying up, <laughs> uh, flying up off the seat. And luckily enough, luckily enough, my quick reaction, I didn't make contact with the overhead rack. Or that the, warrants a by the Lord Jesus. The oh, boy. That bang on the head now, be the Jesus. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tom. Yeah, I love, I Fantastic. love. It. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So let's get back to uh, Michael O'Leary yes. and, and why yeah. he gets a lot of crap for you know being the, just the, the CEO of the, CEO or something or the like airline. That, yeah. So the main sort of thing of the idea for him when he joined in 1987 was literally because he took a visit to the uh, to the states and had a look at Southwest Airlines business model and liked the idea of a strip back. Um, Strip back service, basically, and almost like you, you like I said at the, at the beginning, you you get what you pay for, sort of thing, which is not much. That's why you don't pay that you that much to, to board a, a flight. And he took that philosophy and brought it to Ryanair, and I think it, it sort of didn't go too well, or it didn't go down well with a lot of people because it was like, well, why you know we're paying all this money to to fly one, two, three hours. Um, and you're not really getting much sort of back for it, really, um, which is why then obviously Ryanair are like one of the cheapest airlines that you can fly with, but you get the bare minimum for flying with them. So I think that's where he gets his criticism from is the fact that, you know, Ryanair, I mean, who knows what Ryanair would be like if they weren't a low cost carrier and they were similarly along the lines of, you know, like a British Airways or even like yeah. a, an Aer Lingus or something like that. They could literally be a, a like, you know, they could be. Well, who, like, who knows what they could be? They they might not even have been around now because of, of things that not, yeah. didn't work out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, it, it was a massive gamble what it took. It was, but I think, like you say, he, he went off southwest. It's cool. Ian, and oh. it's obviously seen now how oh. how good Southwest Airline really is. And and you know and and it, that's a massive airline as well, a massive low cost. And at the time as well, we had Laker Air in this country as well, and that were a similar kind of thing. So the, the idea was already planted in his head, I'm sure, and he usually knew. He, he, I mean, he's, he's been CEO for that company for that length of time for a reason, and that's not because he, he sort of throws money away. 
he's, he's very, very rude and um, he's, he's very, very true, man. He's very, very good at what he does. I mean, mm. not a lot of people like him, but, you know, you don't make money by giving it away, do you? Let's be honest. It's turned well, out to be a successful business for isn't it? Yeah. Oh, big time, yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's still carrying... I mean, I didn't... I didn't because of uh, the pandemic over the last couple of years, the, um, the actual passenger they had not been carrying as many passengers and things like that so all the figures were all a bit all mixed up and mumbo jumbled but um they're carrying all carrying millions of passengers every year aren't they oh, all the oh right? big time yeah and, and millions of passengers aren't money neither no well, well a few of them do us all so, but yeah it's more, I'm just don't want to fly on it don't fly on it uh, god knows how much and fly in with the carrier that's what i say well that's it i think one passenger is not really going to bother brian there when they're you know, safely flying a lot of passengers a year. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, like you say, the uh, looking at the safety and even the green credentials as well. It's you know, it's it's it's, it's a very good business to be quite honest. It really is. It's yeah. a good airline for what it is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to bring this one up and just say that Mark Jones says, imagine if Ryanair bought an A380 or a 747-8. Wash your mouth out. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that <laughs> that's worse than swearing don't ever do that don't ever compare you know don't ever put ryanair and 747 in the same sentence never do that <laughs> I, th I think he was going to dip into long haul flights as well weren't he but he never he, i think we've talked about this before with short haul if you're going to be a short haul carrier just stay a short carrier don't try and do something that you can't do and that that's been the downfall of many many airlines doesn't You've seen as soon as you start dip, dipping the toes into something, hmm. that's well, problem not, is, um, it, it, sort of, it, it sort of falls apart, doesn't it? Problem yeah. is, um, we spoke about it on the Southwest Airlines episode, I think it was like episode 15, I think it was. Yeah, well, Southwest don't seem to do that, but they they stick to they've got bases flight. around the states, yeah, but they will fly like almost like a small spider web from mm. like their own hub, so they'll have a hub, say, like Denver. And then they'll have like a select few places that they'll go to, but they'll have another hub somewhere else. Mm. So it's almost like dotted yeah. all over the place rather yeah. than pick one and yeah. then spread out the whole thing. Like, you know, like just, you know, here's your hub and here's the rest of the destinations. Mm. So it's spread out all over the place. And it's the same they, with Ryanair. So they don't need to fly from like a Liverpool to uh, like uh, Warsaw or, or something like that. Yeah. Or things yeah. like that. If they can set up a base in Warsaw and then go further. Yeah. Because the thing is, as well, not a lot of people know is that their 737s are not ETOPS registered either. So they have to stay, which is why they also don't dip their toe into the long haul route, is because they're not ETOPS red, like you know, certified. So they have to stay within a certain distance of an airfield just in case. Tom. Uh -huh. Tom, as far, Tom, as far as I know, as, as far as I know, I think Ryanair actually flight to Russia as well. As far as I know, I I could have I could have sworn I was watching a video uh, on uh, on YouTube uh, one night and I seen a Ryanair seven three seven taking off from Moscow. I know they go to Kiev. Yeah, no, the, yeah. The, this 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 was this was I know in some part of uh, uh, of, uh, of Moscow now because. Because I think it was, I think it was Dom or the Domo. I'm not sure now, but I, I, I need, I need to be able to track that video down again and and see, see if I, if, if it is Moscow. They do not. Do they not? Mm -mm. Ah, okay. I'll just check their list of destinations, and good God, there's loads. <laughs> I, I, I bet, I bet there is. Good Lord, is there loads? Wow. But would you like to hazard a guess just we'll move away from uh michael o'leary at the moment and the business model and everything else like that right, yeah, would you okay. like to guess what uh Ryanair's biggest market is spain i bet you you want to go to spain I, I he's go... probably done his research so he's probably going no to no I'm, I'm i'm not i'm not saying spain i'm not saying um i'm going to say somewhere more east european like poland or something like that to be okay. quite honest Okay. We'll get people's opinions in the chat first. Yes. No googling because I know if you cheated. Right. Well, I'm not going. I I I'm not the Google on no time because I'm using. No, I'm talking about the people that are watching. No oh, googling. I know. Oh, if you, I know. Right. I know these people's characters. If they cheat, I'll know they have done. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Tom. I know they have done. Uh, Jack Rolls says Dublin. That is wrong. It's not Dublin. 
<laughs> Dublin is not their biggest market. So uh, Marco Barrett just quickly saying uh, that Ryanair, he thinks that Ryanair fly as far as Jordan. Tel Aviv. The in the Middle that's East. That's where I've seen it, Tom. Tel Aviv in Tel Aviv. Israel. Yes. I'll confirm that. Two seconds. All right. They do. They go to Ben Gurion Airport. Yeah, so it is Tel Aviv. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Um, so basically, Ryanair's biggest market is actually Italy. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. So the UK is surprisingly not the biggest market for Ryanair. It's the second, um, second biggest market. Where wow. do you think Ireland come? You know the the actual place that the airline was founded. Where do you think they come in the list? I I'm going to go uh, no may, I I probably I probably I, I might be wrong in a time I don't know but I'm going to go with third place. Third place, Ian. I would say it's a lot. For, I mean, they've got how many two hundred and um, two hundred twenty-five destinations. I think. Yeah, two. Yeah, well, I've got two hundred and twenty. Well, um, I would say somewhere. I, I would say Ireland's probably about. Somewhere between seventy and a hundred, I would probably say, to be quite honest. What in the list? In the list, I, 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 yeah, the Republic biggest market, Ireland. like in terms of a country. Wow. What well, for people? For passenger numbers? <laughs> no, the biggest market, as in like the list of destinations that they go to, like from like so basically the the amount of traffic and things like that. Where do you think Ireland come on the list? Oh, well, it's going to be a lot higher then, isn't it? Because they're an Irish based company aren't they so yeah probably somewhere around 10 to 15 or something like that because i would still say there's, there's there's bigger places so despite the fact that ireland is like the airline's home base mm. we're actually fifth in the list right fifth? and oh, spain no, no. is third spain oh, is the third biggest oh, market right. and ireland is right. the fifth biggest market i mm. well i wasn't far off i suppose but yeah well i'm quite yeah. surprised at, at italy mm. so yeah funny. absolutely mm. um Italy is, in fact, the carrier's honeypot. There you go. So it's the honeypot of the airline. So that's their main focus is Italy. Oh, would that um, be Milan now, Tom? Would that be Milan in Italy? I believe uh, Milan is one of them, but I don't think it's any. I don't think it's the main airports because they have to think about uh, landing. Uh, oh, right. as well. I think cost, Rome is it? Rome is the big one. I think, oh, but it's not. Yeah. It's not. Well, I can't even pronounce the, the thing there. I just go with Fiume. I know the proper name, but I don't. I can't pronounce it. But it's not the main airport in Rome. It's like uh, Chiampino, I think it is, which is yeah. the secondary airport in Rome that they fly a crap ton of planes to, mm. and have a base there as well. So they fly out from from there as well. Wow, that's amazing. So mm. yeah, so uh, Italy is in fact the carrier's hot, a honey pot and has been since 2014. So a 2014. good wow. yard portion when it uh, overtook Spain in the UK. Mm. Those three. Um, stand way ahead of the likes of Germany, which is the fourth biggest market, Poland, which is the sixth biggest market, and Greece, which is the tenth biggest market. My God, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so if you fancied flying from um, the UK to Italy, you can go to the likes of Algiero, Ancona, Bari, Bologna, Brindisi, Cagliari, oh, Bologna, yeah. Catania, Comiso, Crotone, Cuneo, uh, Genoa, La Mesa Terme, which I think is Albia, I think it is. I might be wrong. Uh, Milan, which is Mal oh, is Malpensa, Malpensa and Oreo Al Sierio uh, International Airport, which both of those are bases. Uh, Naples, Albia, but yeah, but that's now terminated. No, that's just not Albia. Uh, Palermo, uh, Parma, Perugia, Pescara, Pisa, Rimini, Rome, Trapani, Trieste, Tru uh, Turin, Venice, and Verona. Verona. Oh, a crap wow. ton. <laughs> mm -hmm. A crap ton. And out of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sixteen of those Italian destinations are bases. Wow. It, I mean, I think Italy's strategically in a good spot, though, isn't it, for the uh, rest of Europe, to be quite honest. You've yeah. got pretty much, you can pretty much cover all of Europe there, can't you, with, um, with a 737, can't you? Quite mm. good. Yeah. Mm. It yeah. is, it's it's frightening just sort of how how much of a market there is for um, Ryanair for for Italy, which, like I say, it surprised you, it surprised me mm. that that was the case of um, you know 
Italy being the biggest market and not focusing on the likes of the UK or, um, you know, Ireland itself sort of thing. Yeah. You know? So I mean, pl- I mean, places like the UK anyway, and e- even likes of like Germany and France, they've got really, really strong airlines, haven't they? They've got mm. a lot of airlines running in and out of those countries with, I don't know, with Lufthansa, Air France, Hop. German yeah. Euro wings, whatever you want to call them, and British Airways and EasyJet and all the rest of them. Oh, what have you got in Italy? Yeah, you've just got the new um, Italian startup, haven't you? And that's pretty much it. Mm. And they're, and they're the... sort of concentrating on them um, spreading the wings already, aren't they? Yeah, they want to go yeah. long goal and God knows what. So they're probably missing a trick on their own doorstep, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to list like loads of like uh, destinations and things like that, but. We'll, we'll probably jump on to sort of you know um where they where they go to um at some point uh, but we'll just narrow it down a little bit because there is there's a, there's a lot there's a lot I of there's there. a lot a lot there are right, yeah, yeah. but a couple of more interesting facts and then we'll get ian's like a couple of stats off of ian mm. um is that the air the airline has actually abandoned only 19 airports in 10 years by god so despite unchecked growth and over the last decade uh, racking up a route network of more than 200 destinations, some have fallen by the wayside. Among them is a number of British airports no longer deemed useful by the carrier. Um, and yeah, like I said, 19, 19 airports in 10 years is I, I, that doesn't sound like a lot to me. No, no, no. So they're obviously doing, you know, they're picking these places carefully to see where certain places are, are kind of desired for flying and then. Just it seems to work for them. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's, it's it's crazy. Um, apparently Glasgow could be next for the chop, as well. Ooh. Um, in terms of bases, as well. Um, I, th- I think with um, I mean, trying trying to run such a tight business the way they've been running it, particularly over the last five or six five or six years when they've got all these bases. And then all of a sudden they've gone from like ninety five percent down to seventy one percent passenger numbers. They've got to sort of claw that money back somehow. So I think by taking away a few of these bases, I think they're going to start. I mean, they, I mean, at the end of the day, they're at the mercy of the shareholders. So they, they, these shareholders want a return, don't they? Mm. So they, they've got to they've got to claw this money back somehow just to get a return back to the shareholders. And I think if cutting the bases is the way forward. And that's what they're going to have to do because they've still got all these um, over two hundred seven three seven maxes on order and things like that. So yeah, no, yeah. Bases, Marco Barrett with a, a good uh, sort of bit of info there. They're saying they've just closed their main Frankfurt base due to rising handling costs. Handling costs yeah, as well. Ooh. So you can mm. see that they're always looking on on the cheap for uh, for a lot of things as well. Mm. So uh, Rob Brown playing spot in asking if Israel or Jordan is the furthest route they fly. Um, I think. I mean, I'm not. You said I'm Tel Aviv, to, didn't you? So I'm trying to think yeah. of the map in that. But I, in terms of airport. in terms of like mm. airports that are further away, you've got likes of Ukraine, uh, Lebanon, which was terminated. So ignore that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Jordan, uh, Jordan is is probably the furthest. I think. Mm. Um. <laughs> Do you know? I think it is. I think Jordan. Yeah, I think Jordan is the uh, the furthest. They they do fly. Wow, that's amazing, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah they just yeah. somehow decided to stop entering Jordan because they probably got, you know, or started entering Jordan rather because they just like the look of it. I guess. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a possibility. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No. It's, uh, it's, it's, could have been a joke there, Tom, somewhere. You know me. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Brilliant. Brilliant. So, a couple more. Um, it's the world's world's fourth largest airline. Wow. Mm. Um, according to the figures from Global Airline Association, um, is it Yata? Yeah, Yata. Can never pronounce that. But yeah, Ryanair carried. 128.9 million passengers in 2017, behind only Delta, American, and Southwest. 
Southwest Airlines. God, Tom, do you know something? Speaking mm. about Southwest now at the moment, uh, they're uh, they're very regular regular at LAX because uh, when I when I do be watching uh, uh, Peter and Josh now uh, uh, on their live stream uh, from uh, LAX. Now I I have to say those boys like this start they start from sunrise uh, uh, in the morning their time over over there up to up to sunset and sometimes they go they go into dark now because they have the the the, the new camera that they have now and it's, it's absolutely outstanding i i now i i just sit back and i watch the show i watch the show and see the amount of southwest planes that goes goes in now there is crazy who's yeah. the other american streamer yeah there's another uh, one isn't uh kevin kevin is his name hmm. he's a nice he's another nice guy so he is now he um he he does most of his uh his uh action from the south side of uh, lax but josh josh and peter now they move around like they go they go over to the to the north to the north runways uh, sometimes and they might do the south side on a on a on, on a regular basis so like they like 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 no they they have two cameras that uh operate they have one on the on on a car park and they have then the one on the south side but then, then they also have uh kevin kevin is the same he does uh does his uh uh, he has another chap uh, on 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 the north side uh, mm. doing the north side traffic. Yeah, I have had it on at night when I've been going to sleep, and I've, I've sometimes I've put it me. on a, I go sleep. To it. I go sleep. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Wonderful. Yeah. Also, um, just while we um, okay, uh, just sorry, I was just reading something then. Um, the website. Um, the website that uh, Ryanair have two 17 year old students were commissioned by Ryanair in 2000 to build the airline's first website. 17 year olds, <laughs> <laughs> two 17 year olds built the website. It's yeah, crazy. hey, Tom, Tom, I see, I see an amazing comment there, uh, there in the chat. There, uh, uh my friend uh, Paul Kelly says, if you were, if you were selling cheap tickets, uh, I'd 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 watch it all the time. Only only to play like the like 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 planes, which which I'm 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 on when when I'm on one. He says <laughs> that's funny now. <laughs> it don't get cheaper than free. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> if we were selling uh, cheap tickets, he'd watch us all the time. <laughs> I only like planes when I'm on one. He, he only well, you know something. Try I think, doing one. I I think. <laughs> I think a lot of people actually often say that to me. Oh, I'd rather, I'd rather uh, be on one than actually uh, watching. Well, you see, I suppose as I say, guys, everyone is different, though, ain't it? Like, uh, like us guys, you know, we love, we love spending hours and ends watching them taking off because I think it's a different engine sound. You see that we're that we like as well, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's crazy to know. Yeah. But, um two students <laughs> literally built the airline's first website Absolutely, uh, the airline, yeah. excuse That's me the airline amazing. was apparently quoted 3.5 million for the design yeah <laughs> mm, which is crazy i mean going through uh when we're going through that <laughs> 280 odd pages of the annual report paul, today paul. and i was looking through it paul, paul, paul. <laughs> and I, I was looking at some of the um i was looking at it it does actually list the wages what some of these people are earning some of the top people at Ryanair, and I would probably say that they're not on as much money as what you'd think they were. Mm, I mean, some of these top people, are, I mean, 50 grand a year, it's not to be sniffed at, but I think for the jobs, what they're doing so high up in an airline such as Ryanair, I think if they was in somewhere like BA or Lufthansa, I think they'd be doubling the money, to be quite oh, honest. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't, I don't think it's the best paid airline, but, you know... People people stick to it and uh, people work. I mean, they, I think they've got fifteen thousand uh, what they call like professional employees, such as pilots and cabin crew and engineers and things like that. And then there's everybody else behind the scenes as well who aren't, you know, who aren't classed as like qualified sort of important sort of. They're all important jobs, but you know, not 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 as important as a pilot or an air steward sort of thing. So. 
I mean, the, the, the absolute the, the the wage bill must be absolutely phenomenal as well. Oh, it probably mm. is. I'd say, yeah, I'd reckon. Yeah. I reckon I'd agree with you on that one, Ian. Yeah, you know. But I like, as I say, like guys, I've um, I've flown on quite a few uh, uh, Ryanair flights on myself, and uh, I've I've met I've met some very nice uh, cabin crew on board, mm. and I've I've met some pretty nice uh, nice co-pilots and captains, and uh, you know the the only only for everything that's going on, I'd say I'd say. They'd let you into the cockpit and everything to have a look around and that like but just just with the circumstances of of uh, COVID and everything like that you know i suppose they have they have to be precautionary mm. now you know yeah mm. yeah mm. nice little fun fact as well did you know the rhino used to serve small bags of alcohol that's right. of alcohol yeah yeah, bags yeah. Of alcohol. yeah they did that's right they were called bullseye baggies uh, oh. A little sachet containing 25 milliliters of vodka, gin, or rum used to be available on all the airline, uh, for wow. all the airlines' passengers, despite the product being banned in Irish pubs and off licenses. Ryanair even offered the baggies for two for one at one point, provoking the air of alcohol charities. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. God. That is yeah. that, that is unbelievable. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? And a nice little one to, to sort of end the fun facts on, at least from me, is that Ryanair collects a whopping £1.5 billion in extra charges every year. My God. No, Tom, I didn't I didn't know that one, no. Nah. But, well, that, I mean, that's how they make the money, though, isn't it? Wow. They have to, haven't they? they have to, I mean, I remember once upon a time, they were going to charge a pound, weren't they, for people to use the loo? Oh, and I think the headline I, in the Guardian, the was, uproar uh, of that was crazy. And, absolutely, yeah. And, so great, the, and here's a good one. There was talks that they were going to actually, actually, uh, set up a, a, a stand up area, like where, where, where you stand up on a plane. Now I don't think, I don't think now anyone can stand up on a, on a, on a, on a goddamn rain or uh, <laughs> fucking uh -huh. whatever, you know. God forgive me for saying the word, but anyway, you'd smash I, your ankles when it lands. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Ian! You probably you probably smash more than your ankles. I will tell you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. There's all the yeah, means going around. Also, once upon a time, as well, they were going to try and actually remove the toilet entirely from the plane, just so they could put more seats in it. Possibly. I think. Oh, that's, you never know, that's know right, they take out. Yeah. You know, no one mm. right now. Then there was like loads of like memes going around of you know you, you paid like five for your seat, but you pay an extra ten pound to have the wings of the plane. Do you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of memes and things like that. So oh, I'm sure if you look my... on the internet, there'll be loads of like Ryanair memes. I might actually try and find some while we're talking about this right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Ian, if you want to hit some some more of your, uh, no, I haven't really got many left. You sort of took them all to be honest. <laughs> you? Whichever ones you do have left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. I'll probably just go back to, um, yeah, the, the, just the amount of flights they were doing. I mean, this was July July the 23rd in 2021. They actually flew. This just this is one just, just one day. Bearing in mind, this was last summer as well, where it was all wow. a bit sketchy and all a bit up in the air and what have you. They actually flew 2,100 flights in that particular day to 210 different airports from 86 bases. So even, even like at the height of the pandemic, they were, I mean, we all know that they stick what they got in press for, you know, trying to keep the trying to keep flying, and they were they were fighting all the uh, COVID restrictions and things like that. But they sort of managed Ooh. to worm their way through it all and what have you. Uh, but it just goes to show that they were they were always fighting for um, just to keep the planes up in air, really, and just to make some money. Don't they? Like, otherwise, I mean. I don't. I think if they weren't doing that, and I think it could have, it could have sent them backwards, couldn't it? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Definitely. Like, so, like, like as you said there, Ian. Yeah, during even, even during during the lockdowns and everything like that, they, uh, the the Rainer Rainer kept uh, kept flying the planes in the air uh, just to keep them airborne. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, had to. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree. I agree on that. No, definitely. Yeah. Let's just go back to have another. Have a quick scout through these. So, yeah, I mean, all together, I mean, in, in the history of Ryanair, going back from uh, from day one so far, they've had, I mean, they've had they've had seven hundred and fifty seven hundred and fifty three 
different planes. And I was trying to put that into context of um, imagine having 753 Boeing 747-8, Seven four seven, seven three seven eight. I'll get there eventually. Yeah, no, yeah, Imagine having seven three sevens dotted around and the, yeah. the amount of money over 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 the history of Ryanair they've actually spent on the actual units, what they're flying and things like that. You're running into a lot, a lot of billions of pounds, and 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 for for a company still to be making a decent profit on top of that after that kind of um, outlay and what have you, it, it's. It's pretty much a phenomenal success story, Ryanair. In, in my eyes, it is anyway. And despite, well, I, like I said, despite the the flack what they get. Well, hmm. I have to I have to say one thing, uh, uh, Ian. I um I I <laughs> oh that's brilliant. Uh, soft landing that goes. Uh, what is it? Uh, that costs soft landing extra. that costs extra. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. That is. Uh, <laughs> well, I I will say though. The the seven three seven uh, eight hundred. They, they are they are a lovely lovely uh, aircraft. I, I I I I do love I do love the sound of those uh, those uh, CFM engines that, that they have uh, on them. Like because because when 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 they're starting up, you can actually hear the the, the bit of a buzzing noise that they make when uh, when they're going for takeoff. But mm. it's, it's it's when the it's when the back of them pass you. That's when you hear the noise. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And Rob yeah. Brown was touching on it here, saying that a lot of the uh, PR stories are for effect, as it gets some free press, and that's why O'Leary is perhaps so controversial at times. In Northern media will report on it, which I, I totally agree with. I mean, any, it, any yeah. news is good news, isn't it? In, in regards to something like that, any any free press is uh, good press, isn't it? True. Gets your name yeah. back out there, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 So like they say like no news is good news, but like you know, any kind of press is 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 press that's going to be. You know, needed for you know, getting yeah. the name out there again as well. So absolutely, yeah. and Marco yeah. Barrett. Uh, I didn't know Marco had actually qualified, got a job with him, but Ryanair wanted to shift me to a different country with about two weeks' notice when I got a job with them as cabin crew. He had to turn it down for that reason, unfortunately. <laughs> what country did they want to ship you to, oh, uh, Marco? <laughs> oh, that, that's awesome! Tom. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was sent to me by Marco just now on Facebook. Oh, so yeah. wow. Yeah, wow. good lad. Keep Brilliant. them coming. Anyone's got any memes, off. just send us send us any memes and we'll, we'll chuck them up on there. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, good fun. Uh, so, I mean, we'll just, we'll quickly go through some, like we say, we're talking about the criticisms that they've had and things like that. We'll quickly go through them. Um, just to kind of, you know, outlay, just, just how much controversy is behind the airline and just how much flight they yeah can get. yeah so, exactly yeah we're not going to go too much into it but we'll go through them so refusal to recognize the unions um apparently was a a thing for them um just um just trying to, to, to think here um basically the the company refused to recognize or negotiate with any union for cabin crew uh during the um it's like a staff sort of payment sort of scheme, I think it was. Um, employment conditions. Um, apparently, Ryanair faced criticism for allegedly forcing pilots to pay tens of thousands of euros for training, then established limited companies in Ireland to have then oh sorry then establish limited companies in Ireland to have the pilots work for Ryanair through an agency, as well as forcing ground staff in Spain to open up bank accounts in Gibraltar, into which. They would receive their wages. Mm. I think uh, that's a business model of many businesses nowadays. Anyway, I mean, when you when you were saying about refusing to, to you know negotiate with with unions, I can go off the the company who I particular company I work for. I know our our company refused to talk to our union about pit wage negotiations and things like that, and they actually threatened threatened us once. I'm not going to name the company, but they actually threatened us once with. Um, they would, if we didn't accept a certain wage negotiation, what they'd put forward, that they would actually stop recognising the union. And that's the company I work for. So that's wow. more different. But these kinds of things don't get it news. And, and what you're saying, Tom, there, again, with, with our companies, it's, it's run on franchises. So yeah, when, yeah, it, yeah. the only way you can get into the company is to buy a franchise into the company. And, and that's it's sort of a similar thing, what you're, you're doing as a Ryanair pilot, where you're sort of ending up becoming... You're sort of becoming a self-employed pilot, aren't you? At the end of the day, mm. 
So no. you sort of becoming self-employed but tied to a company, which is what a lot of companies do. A lot of parcel companies do it, for instance, don't they? You become self-employed, but you're tied to that one company. So in a sense, you're not self-employed. You're actually still working for that company, but if you don't work, you don't earn. That's and that's it, a similar yeah. kind of philosophy what I think Ryan Earl were trying to put across, weren't it? Yeah. 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 Um, other uh, sort of controversies they got brought up in was the, the an ancillary, ancillary? Ancillary. Yep. Ancillary, yeah, ancillary revenue and in-flight service. 20% of Ryanair's revenue is generated from ancillary revenue, that is income from yep. sources other than ticket bears. In 2009, their ancillary revenue was at 519 million uh, wow. euros, compared to a total revenue of 2.9 billion euros. Mm. Uh, Ryanair has been described by the consumer magazine Holiday Witch as being the worst offender for charging for optional extras. I've actually had a look on their website for like flights and stuff and they do charge a lot for like extras uh, it's crazy um as part of the low cost business model the airline charges fees which can be related to alternate services such as using the airport check-in facilities instead of the online service fees they're paying by credit card um it also charges for extra services like checked in luggage and offers food and drink for purchase as part of a buy on board program that's right um, yeah. Uh, no frills. Uh, new Ryanair aircraft have been delivered with non-reclining seats, no seat back pockets, safety cards stuck in the back of seats, and life jackets slowed overhead rather than under the seat. This allows the airline to save on aircraft costs and enable faster cleaning and security checks during the short turnaround times. There's uh, loads of other things and things like that. Um, yeah. So, for example, we were talking about just then about the toilets and stuff. So, other proposed measures to reduce frills further than uh, further have included eliminating two toilets to add six more seats, redesigning the aircraft to allow standing passengers traveling in vertical seats, charging passengers for using the toilet, charging extra for overweight passengers, and asking passengers to carry their checked luggage into the uh, check-in luggage to the aircraft. While CEO Michael O'Leary initially acclaimed initially claimed that the uh, the charging passengers for toilets was going to happen. He stated days later that it was technically impossible and legally difficult, but mm. a very interesting and cheap PR. Wow. Mm. So that sort of ties into what we were talking about earlier. Uh, customer service. Ryanair has been criticized for many aspects of its customer service. Um, the Economist wrote that Ryanair's Cavalier treatment of passengers had given Ryanair a deserved reputation for nastiness and that the airline had become a byword for appalling customer service and jeering rudeness towards anyone or anything that gets in its way. Um, just trying to see here. Um, yep, so some, uh, who was it that, that uh, commented? I want to put that up on the screen there. I think it was Rob Brown. It was this comment here of, did an Irish lady not sue Ryanair a few years ago for being promised free flights for being the millionth passenger? That is correct. Um, because in 2002, the High Court in Dublin awarded Jane O'Keefe 67,500 euros damages and her costs after Ryanair re, uh, reneged, 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 reneged. reneged on a free travel prize she was awarded for being the airline's one million passenger. So that actually, did happen. Actually, something, yeah, I think I heard something about that, actually. Yeah, she, she, uh, she was one of, the, one of the top passengers or something like that. And uh, they didn't even uh, give her what she what she deserved. Yeah, that's a bit uh, tight. It is yeah. tight, you know that that is wrong. Mm. Like you know, like mm. uh, I bet you know that was a uh, BA or or someone else. They'd uh, they'd they'd look after you to the best of their mm. knowledge. Another thing that they had was the airline came in the. Um, heavy criticism for its poor treatment of disabled passengers in 2002 it refused to provide wheelchairs for disabled passengers at london stansted airport greatly angering disabled rights groups the airline argued that the provision was the responsibility of the airport authority stating that wheelchairs were provided by 80 of the 84 ryanair destination airports at the time the court ruling in 2004 judged that the responsibility should be shared by the airline and the airport's owners Ryanair responded by adding a surcharge of 50 pence to all its flight prices. Uh, in July 2012, a 69-year-old woman um, who has a colostomy bag uh, refused permission to bring her uh, was refused permission to bring her medical kit on board, despite having a letter from a doctor explaining the need for her to carry this um, with her, and was asked by Ryanair boarding staff to lift up, lift up her shirt in front of fellow passengers to prove that she had a colostomy bag. Mm. Oh, God. Um, 
see yes. Uh, the, the, the thing is with Rhino as well, they're, they're not they're not scared of criticism, are they? They, they seem to no, they, 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 they manage to bat it off all the time, don't they? They're very yeah. very good at um, yeah. bat PR. And, and the thing is, I, I think you could you could feed you know you could be fed all the bad PR in the world, but they still get 1.5 million passengers flying with them every year. It wouldn't yeah. change a thing, would it? People still want cheap flights, whether they've got a good reputation or a bad reputation, don't they? And, and yeah. some airlines it's are scared of them, aren't keep they? them coming. Mm. Some airlines are scared, and and I think in Michael, I'm not going to defend Michael O'Leary. Some of the decisions and some of the things what he said, because I think some of it is out of order. To be quite fair, but um, he's only a puppet, really, for the people who are higher up than him, who are actually, you know, who actually own the company. The investment mm. banks and things like that. So if they want to return, then it's it's his job to get the return, isn't it? So exactly, it, yeah. It's not always down to that one particular. He's just the fall guy, really, for the company, isn't it? Yeah, seems to be that way. Mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we're going to do? There's so much more you can talk about with Ryan there, but I think the, the some of the criticism is is unnecessary. But then at the same time, with what we just read out, it's kind of justified at the same time. Mm. But overall, I mean, I've never flown with them. I'd like to, to have that experience. Um, Joe, you've flown with them. Um, so I have, I have. You can gone, tell yeah. us how, I mean, apart from being treated like royalty, um, was the service good? Uh, well, no, I, I've been, well, I was on, I was on the flight to Frankfurt uh, over, over and back, and uh, I was on a flight to Gatwick uh, uh, um uh, over and back and yeah the, i i had to have to say you no know, great service uh and uh and food food wise food is lovely like uh they they give you lovely 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 rolls and uh they with cheese and ham on them and everything like that uh and they heat them up they heat them up in the ovens and everything for you and absolutely gorgeous mm. uh on, on my flight to frankfurt now i i had uh i had had lovely, lovely, lovely uh, rolled pizza, and that was absolutely gorgeous. I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't round, round the service. Uh, the hospitality of the crew were, was very nice, and uh, the girl said to me on board, says if you, if you need, if you need a drink, a drink in a few minutes, she says just, just buzz. She says, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be down to you. You know, you, you, yeah. you, you couldn't wrong them in any way, like you know. And, and now I have to say that those, those couple of flights I was on. The, the landings were fairly fairly okay like uh but i i was on i was on a flight uh did you pay uh, extra for those landings uh, uh, uh <laughs> no thank god i didn't come <laughs> but, but no i have to uh actually paul 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 kelly just said tell them about about the time uh right 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 there uh uh induced your uh, camcorder to a bottle Oh, introduced uh, yeah actually i was on i was on a right there uh uh coming back from gatwick and uh uh they, inter they introduced my uh camcorder on board to uh two bottles of whiskey uh during takeoff <laughs> yeah yeah so uh and i never i never i never got refunded for the damage that was done to to my uh camcorder uh i i had to pay over nearly nearly 400 and uh Four hundred something pounds uh, to, to get repaired, but when I got repaired, Tom, it wasn't it wasn't worth a fuck. God forgive me for saying it. <laughs> so 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 like what? What? So excuse my language, folks. But no, uh, you're good. You're fine. <laughs> uh, as I say, when it comes when it comes to what to what happened to my equipment on board on board the flight, like uh, decimated by two bottles of whiskey, and and then. Then, then I was drowned. I was drowned, drowned at myself with liquor, with liquor all over my body. I was soaked, uh, soaked right through. I smelt, I smelt of alcohol coming off the fucking plane. <laughs> so, so I did. So, so like uh, that, that, that no, that happened actually back in, uh, back in the early nineties when I was on a, when I was on a seven three seven two hundred. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so imagine, so imagine that, uh, Jack, Jack, Jack. Jack uh, puts up, ha ha. <laughs> I'm just bringing this comment in here because says Jack Wells says to be fair, to, just to say I've flown with Ryan now, I may have to go inside Jordan just to see what she's like on an island. Nice one, Jack. I think Jack's getting a bit giddy out now, isn't he? Certainly giddy uh, over Jordan. Oh, he he, big time. I love it though. 
Mm. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. So we're going to start to sort of wrap the show up. Don't go anywhere, though, because we've got a nice little surprise that Joe's going to finish off with <clears throat> as he sort of shouts out his uh, typical Ryanair shout out. We'll do that at the end. However, I did promise you that we'll go through the Twitter page um, of uh, Ryanair. I will make that like a little bit bigger, actually, so you, you can see it. This is the first tweet that actually came up that actually makes me laugh a lot. So this was uh, a news article that the Manchester uh, Evening News shared of absolute scenes in the House of Commons this morning as former Tory MP Chris Wakeford uh, sat in the, sat, went and sat with the Labour Party. I am just going to turn the sound off because I don't want any copyright striking. But the comment that Ryanair put was when you cross the aisle to sit beside your mate. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, mate. So it is, you know, they are, honest to God, they are so funny. <laughs> love one I, lo I love, I love, I love the, uh, I love the, 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 the uh, Prime Minister's question time or whatever sometimes. Another one they put. Is when people try to roast us but spell it Ryan Air. <laughs> <laughs> they remind me a lot of Audi in that sense, where they, they, they're not yeah. they're not bothered about taking Mickey out of the cells, are they? Uh, no. This is the one. This is the one that got me big time right now. <laughs> and it was uh, a, a Twitter put up of an actual tweet of if you can dream it, tweet it. And it was uh, a, a sort of a picture of Tina Snow, whoever she is, saying, "I need a team." Because I promised Rap Gone take off for me. And one of the admin team put, one day we're going to fly to the US. If you can dream it, tweet it. One day we're going to fly to the US. Wow. That was then followed up by somebody else who put, one day admin is going to get sacked. Huh. Huh. My God. <laughs> yeah, not oh. like Rim could never be us. <laughs> this is another good one as well. So a guy called Massimo put up, the commercial aviation industry has changed a great deal since it first became an integral part of the way we travel. This is the interior of an airliner. Or sorry, this is the this is the way the bleh, bleh, teeth in. Let's try again. This is what the interior of an airliner looked in 1926. Ryanair put, no leg room, could never be us. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeez. <Wow. laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> So, uh, uh, football site put up Luis Suarez is interested in joining Aston Villa when his contract is up this summer, according to Gerard Romero. Ryanair put Suarez, Coutinho, Gerard. Sounds like the Beatles making a comeback. Birmingham, <laughs> renaming the airport. <laughs> wow. Uh, Pumpkin put, I would like to book a £15 Ryanair flight and get out of here. Ryanair put, when the first email of the day lands in your inbox. <laughs> that is brilliant. Some good ones there, no? Yeah. Yeah, they're quite witty, aren't they? They are. They are in, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are. Wow. There's, there's loads of things here. That is that brilliant. They can just, yeah. I mean, you you can go through. Um, <clears throat> here, somebody put, hey, Ryanair, is this allowed as luggage? And uh, Ryanair put, hide this from the book club, winos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, wow! Uh, they put a, a picture up of uh, Slack Technologies, which is like an app that you install. Ryanair put Downing Street right now. <laughs> Uninstall this app um, oh, for wow. James Slack. Um, uh, somebody put up uh, who's helping me pack uh, Granite Xhaka's bags and sending him on a first class Ryanair flight home to Rome. I've had enough, and Ryanair put. Fix that for you by crossing out first class. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, Tom. Got us a, some, uh, some pretty good ones there. Yeah. Uh, Ryanair put up this tweet from the Novak Djokovic uh, saga. Mr. Djokovic uses his second challenge of the set. Umpire, challenge denied. Challenge official review, out. Out. Tony <laughs> And there you go. There's another one as well. So you've got Australia, not Australia. <laughs> out. Ryanair put, unlucky, Novak Djokovic, flight home. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ryanair yes. are, uh, yeah. So I, I think this is probably something about The Apprentice. Yep. The tweet was deja vu. 
Mm. Like, God. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, this is another tweet from Ryanair. I'll just go for a couple more um, of how Ryanair admin throws shade, how social media sees Ryanair throw shade, how cancel culture humans see Ryanair throw shade on the back of a Ryanair plane. <clears throat> And uh, Reiner put creativity and comedy is subjective. Wow. <laughs> class. That's class. Um, yeah, here we go. Somebody put the audacity that you actually believe you guys have the moral high ground here. Don't know what the tweet was about. We'll just have a look here. There we go. Boris Johnson for 25 minutes on 20th of May 2020. I don't know. I'm at a party. <laughs> <laughs> wow fluky music but the audacity that you guys actually you, know, you actually believe you guys have the more high ground here with the laughing gif huh. Ryanair then responded with yes usually about 35,000 feet in the air that's pretty high in admin's opinion huh. wow <laughs> brilliant um, Ryanair put Preview of our upcoming summer flight in-flight drinks, Downing Street parties. Official sensitive number 10 only inspired cocktail menu. The Bojito, <laughs> which is fresh lime juice, dash of deceitfulness, sugar syrup, rum, and a splash of lovely weather. <laughs> uh, virgin facts on the beach, uh, giant gra <laughs> peach grant shaps, and cranberry juice. Vodka can be added if you bring your own booze. <laughs> Extras include Jacob Rees Boggs Creek, Corona Extra and Pinot Shit Show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, so that's, yeah, that's just a few of their tweets. If you don't follow Ryanair on, on Twitter, do give them a follow because they are so funny. Brilliant. The admins are hilarious, honestly. They are absolutely brilliant. So, so good. That is good. That is but good. Yes. Anyway, so we're going to begin to wrap the show up. I could sit there all night and just go through Ryanair's tweets. But, I'm going to. Um, but we're going to begin to wrap the show up. So this is the part of the show where we do our shout outs. Now, obviously, Steve's not here. So Steve will be doing his, obviously. So we're going to do us three because I missed Ian out two weeks ago and I still haven't heard the end of it. Uh, Steve, uh, Ian. <laughs> I'll get the names right this time. Uh, Ian. You can go first. Brilliant. Right. Um, I'm going to give my first shout out. I don't, I don't really do many, but I want to give a big shout out to my daughter, Tian. So she's Aww. changed her name because it came up on her emails as Grey Blue. And she didn't want her emails to come up with Grey Blue. They wanted it with her name because she's got herself a job and it's her first job since she left school. And she's, working Yay! Yay! Brilliant. And she's working at Dunelm. The, you know, the Very good. Hey. So she's got herself a job there. And if There's you need a graphic a discount, for that. I'm your mum. There's a graphic for that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm actually shout out. I'm super proud of her. And, I, I, you know, she'll she'll smash it. I know she will. So I'm really, really the looking for, forward um, to her. Yeah, yeah. She, she's, she's had a rough the year. So um, definitely. So that's a massive, massive big shout out to, to T in there for getting a job at uh, Dunelm. And nice can't, wait to, can't wait for the discount for You're the very new welcome, Tina. Pillars. Very welcome. Big mm. thumbs up to you there. Yeah. yeah and, uh, you. And, they, and they do those JML leg pillows as well, where you're letting your side and you have a pillow in between your leg. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> they do a JML leg pillow to stop you chafing at night, and they're, uh, they're 15 quid at Dunelm, so get yourself down there. So that's a plug for Dunelm. No. So apart from that, massive <laughs> shout-out to you, Tom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> A massive shout out to you as well, Joe. It's been it's been a really really good show to be quite honest. It has, really, it has. Really it's been interesting awesome. And, uh, Absolutely awesome. Yeah, really. It's been really good, and uh, it's a shame Steve couldn't be here. So a big shout out to Steve as well. I hope oh, he's feeling yeah. better after his. Oh, uh, sod Steve. He shouldn't have been on the piss up in Edinburgh, should he? Oh, he's had an epic journey, <laughs> and he down from Edinburgh down to. Um, yeah, down if you got the plane, he'd be here by now. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, he'll be stuck into his L now, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, cool. I know it says Mart I know Martin's been on and he scooped Stephen from the train. What a mess! Shoved the curry inside him and it's doing the trick. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so big, out, big shout out to Steve as well. And a massive shout out to everyone else who's been listening as well tonight and who's been joining in with chat and um, giving us your little bits, your nuggets here and there. Mm. and. Uh, and a shout out to um, Jack Rolls as well, but not a big shout out to your jokes, mate. I'm afraid. Yeah. So... 
Fantastic. Yeah, so that's it. So massive thanks to everyone, especially to you and my daughter. So, I'll go through them. Jack Rose saying well congratulations. Done, well done, Obviously, your daughter yeah. says thank you for the shout out. Marco Barrett yeah. saying congratulations. And Jack saying congratulations as well. Fully deserved. Absolutely smash it out. Absolutely. Yeah, smashed. well done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, she did. Brilliant. Mr. Dooley, you're up next. Thank you very much, Tom. I, I, I absolutely always appreciate because uh, because you guys, I think, know that I always end up being the longest uh, uh, on here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just well, putting anyway. my stuff away now, Joe, while you're doing it. Yeah. No, problem. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all, Ian. No problem at all. Bastard. But, uh, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, listen, guys, uh, uh, not the, the, the first shout outs, anyway. Of course, to yourself, Tom, and uh, to you, Ian, and a big uh, congratulations to your uh, your daughter, Tyne, yes, again. Yeah. And well, well, well done, and best of luck, and I hope everything goes goes well now from here on in for you as well. And a big shout out to to my good friend Paul Kelly and his uh, his amazing family who have been uh, been rocks to me over the last uh, uh, couple of days since uh, my, the loss of my uh, good friend, the best friend. True best friend uh, I grew up with, went to school with for for many many years when I was a young lad in in my hometown of Bagnestown, and I I do I do miss him miss him terrible, and I, I am going to miss him because because there be times here I could be sitting I'd be sitting and have the phone beside me and I'd be expecting a phone call because every night every night Tommy used to always uh, uh, call me to check in in on me to see how I was, especially after after my uncle and then my mum and dad of course and and of course a big shout out to uh uh rebecca uh rebecca and mark uh, uh my other my other good friends uh that, that that have been with me over the last few days since since uh the sudden passing and uh mm. to all my other good friends uh here on facebook that, uh, a big shout out to everybody that joined in on our chat uh here on the on the show tonight and uh uh to uh jack jack rolls my my good friend jack uh, uh you're 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 an absolute uh, gentleman and of course big shout out to all our uh our frontline workers uh and uh, emergency services or, and law enforcers or that that are doing a marvelous job throughout everything going on and and that and of course as i say i've i've had a big shout out to steve not forgetting steve uh look forward to having you back steve Look, look forward to having you back uh, again soon, uh, Mason. I, I, we're glad you got home safe and everything like that. And I'm going to end it on a, on a high note. By the Lord! Not yet! Not yet! Not yet! Okay, okay, okay. There's a special time for that. There's a special right, time for okay. that. Not yet. And, and finally, finally, anyway, I'm going to uh, <laughs> uh, uh, give a big shout out to everybody who tunes into the into the podcast every 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 week and it is it is it is a podcast it's definitely a podcast <laughs> definitely a podcast <laughs> brilliant uh i shall quickly run through some shout outs and then we'll get to end the show so first shout out is of course to both you uh ian and Joe. thanks tom uh, for doing a stellar job in the absence of steve who you know would rather be on a piss up at this point that's it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. They've just fallen down. There you go. Um, <laughs> but, but no, a big shout out to you two for, uh, you know, uh, stepping up this evening. Um, and, you know, it's been fantastic. Do you know what? It's been a lot of fun actually talking about Ryan there. Oh, I love this. I love super, this. Yeah, super amounts of fun. Um, you know, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's been good fun. But no, big shout out to Steve as well, who deserves his break. Um <laughs> Sell out Steve. <laughs> Hashtag sell out Steve. <laughs> That's going to cause a few arguments. Um, but no, um, so big shout out to Steve. He's, he's deserved his break um, uh, this week. So, you know, we'll have him back for next week for sure. Um, big shout out to everybody that's contributed this evening with comments and everything and, and sort of to echo what Ian said, a big shout out to your daughter for getting the job and stuff. And um, yeah. yeah. Now she can pay rent, which is great. Hey! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Get in there. <laughs> we want rent. 
we want rent. Um, but no, big shout out to her for, for getting yeah. the job and stuff. It's been tricky well for done. her and stuff. Be well done to her. Yeah. Yeah. This will, this will do her the world of good. So Absolutely, yeah, big congratulations yeah. to her. And then a big shout out to, like I say, everyone that's commented, been watching, subscribed, and everything else like that. Um, and of course, a big shout out to all of the health workers, uh, NHS or wherever you are in the world, whatever your health service is, uh, for the continued efforts throughout this absolute shit show um, that we're going through right now. Um, so yeah, so a big, big shout out to everybody. And then finally, big shout out to one very special person that they know exactly who they are, who has been watching this evening for putting a massive smile on my face when I need it the most. So a big shout out to you uh, you are very much appreciated and i love you um so all that's left for us to do is next week we're going to be back wednesday ne now this next wednesday is going to be the last time we do a wednesday show before we jump back to the weekends i think so we're going to sort of try and round out a wednesday show in style don't know what we'll talk about yet we'll find something fun to talk about no doubt and see if we can get somebody on in the meantime but yeah next wednesday 7 30 p.m we'll be on and we will uh surprise you with whatever we've got steve will be back um and yeah keep up to date on our social medias if you want to follow ian on instagram you can i do everyone else but they're not here uh, so I'll leave Steve out of this one for this week. But you can follow Ian on Instagram where he posts his pictures of aircraft on there um, on the odd occasion. Not all the time, but on the odd occasion. But they do well. I've done, a lot, I've done a few the last few days. So mm. Gordon, they are good. Yeah, no, Sometimes I get bored of it, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom, before you do uh, wrap up uh, the show, I just I just want to thank you for the lovely the lovely tribute at the start uh, 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 and that as well. Uh, in honor it was on your behalf sort of thing it, it wasn't what it wasn't planned or anything but i thought if it's in there because i watched the, the intro and i was like oh, i'll put the wrong one but you know what it's not the wrong one at this point so yeah uh -huh. it's a, a tribute to to you uh, to your friend and stuff so was absolutely much. Much. Mm -hmm. yeah Thanks so we're, we're thinking of you Jeb. we'll be thinking of you um you can follow uh us on twitter uh you can also find us on facebook i haven't done the twitch one yet but the link is in the comments um and it will be on the social medias as well uh, if you want to keep up to date with everything that's happening at the moment however all that's left for us to say is we'll be back next wednesday 7 30 p.m uh ian if you'd like to say goodbye to everybody yep goodbye everybody thanks for tuning in and it's been an awesome show Wonderful. see you all again next week stay Wonderful. safe i'm gonna say goodbye to everybody because i think joe's gonna have the closing sentence for this um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see you next Wednesday, 7.30 PM for another, um, wonderful show. No doubt. Um, take care. Have a fantastic rest of the week and a fantastic weekend. We are so yeah. close now. One now of the, of the weekend, I, I literally cannot I, wait. Yeah. I know it's crazy how, how fast the week is after going, but listen, uh, the first thing I want to say anyway is, uh, a big goodbye to everybody and, uh, thank, thanks for all of us for following on this amazing podcast and show uh uh with me tom steve and uh and uh, uh ian. Ian as well. and uh and ian don't forget uh, you for crying out uh, loud he won't uh, let it go or, <laughs> uh, well if he if he never ever ever met me down the line sometime which i hope we do uh, meet sometime i'd probably probably get a good kick into the backside and say you probably oh, would yeah i probably would he now no, i'm still paying for my forgetfulness now so that was two weeks ago <laughs> oh i i know i remember that tom yeah <laughs> but anyway Jesus. Uh, anyway, I now listen to this before I do 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 get into this. Uh there is going to be a, a bit of bit of intense swearing, just let you know about but you know yourselves, uh, it's nice, it's nice to go out on a high note and uh you know, no matter what, I may I, I may curse at Ryanair, but I, I do love Ryanair in my own in my own heart and soul. Like mm -hmm. I love I love flying with them and you know I I, I that I don't the only one problem I had was with my uh camcorder on on, on board that one flight. But it, that I'd say it was the fact because we hit turbulence on the way over across the Irish Sea. But the, these things happen unfortunately. But anyway, here we go now. I'm gonna say by the Lord Jesus the noise out that fucking plane be the Jesus. Fuck out you goddamn rain son of a darn. 
fucking bastard, you know. Woo! No, oh, brilliant. <laughs> See you next week, everybody. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs>